say thank you. Good day to each and every one of you. You know what time and what day it is. It's Thoughtful Tuesday with yours truly, Dr. George Lee III and St. John the Mighty Fortress. Take this moment to uh, like and share as well as comment and welcome everyone into this virtual space and place of worship and word. Again, we are so grateful that in this season that we're in, um, some of us keep asking when is it going to be over. For some of us, we don't even remember when it started. Uh, but we're here, but God is still faithful um, to each and every one of us. So as we prepare to go to God in prayer, we thank you for sharing your praise reports and your prayer concerns, um, as well as any other uh, pieces of information that you desire um, to share with us uh, and our prayer time to be able uh, to help you and your family and your life get along the way. So as we join together in prayer, Lord, we thank you. We love you that you do all things wonderfully well. Thank you for this opportunity, privilege, um, to be able to come before you and to worship you in the beauty of holiness. And as always, we ask God that these words that emanate from our lips and um, the feelings that come from our heart will always, always, always be acceptable in thine sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, bless us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, type in amen, amen, and amen. This morning, we're going uh, to share um, in this very thoughtful um, text that is found in Genesis 26, 17 through 33. And our title on this wonderful day simply is, What in the whale do you want? Yeah, you heard me. What in the whale do you want? Let's tiptoe through this pericope. Genesis 26, 17 to 33. Listen. So Isaac left. He camped in the valley of Gerar and settled down there. Isaac dug again the wells which were dug in the days of his father Abraham, but had been clogged up by Philistines after Abraham's death. He renamed them using the original names that his father had given them. One day, as Isaac's servants were digging in the valley, they came on a well of spring water. The shepherds of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's shepherds, claiming this water is ours. So Isaac named the well Essek, which means quarrel, because they quarreled over it. They dug another well, and there was a difference over that one also. So he named it Sitna, which is accusation. He went on from there and dug yet another well. But there was no fighting over this one, so he named it Rehoboth, which means wide open spaces, saying, Now God has given us plenty of space to spread out in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That very night God appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Don't fear a thing because I'm with you. I will bless you and make your children flourish. Because of Abraham, my servant, Isaac built an altar and he prayed, calling on God by name. He pitched his tent and his servants started digging another well. Then Ambibelech came to him from Gerar with Azaha, his adversary and advisor, and Phicol, the head of his troops. Isaac asked them, why do you come to me? You hate me. You threw me out of your country. They said, we realized that God was on your side. We like now to make a deal between us, a covenant that we maintain friendly relations. We haven't bothered you in the past. We treated you kindly and let you leave us in peace. So God's blessings be with you. Isaac laid out a feast and they ate and drank together. Early in the morning, they exchanged oaths and Isaac said goodbye and they parted as friends. Later the same day, Isaac's servants came to him with news about the well they had been digging. We've struck water, Isaac. Huh. Now he named that well Sheba, which means oath. And that's the name of the city, Beersheba, oath well to this very day. What in the well do you want? You see that Isaac now um, got digging wells all over the place. You know, the individuals, you know, he digs it, they claim it. He dig it, they claim it. Now, finally, he digs one, you know, and no one bothers him. And then individuals come from his past and those that didn't like him. He, it sounds like our lives, you know, or days of our lives. 
let me tell you something, you know, as you talking about what in the world do you want? Number one, dare to dig where others have dug. Dare to dig where others have dug. Sometimes um, we look at spaces and places and we're thinking like, oh, I'm not going to do that. They've done that before. They've done this before. But I dare you, you know, because again, sometimes things need to be refreshed, revisited, renewed, revived. So dare to dig where others have dug. Don't worry about what has been going on and done in the past. If this is what God has led you to do, dare to dig where others have dug. Number two, detect those who show up for the glory without the story. Uh-huh. Detect, look around you. There are individuals um, who will never be there for the work. They'll never be there, amen, for the sweat activity equity. They'll never be there for the blood, sweat, and tears that you put in, but what they will be there for is that when it's all over and the dust is settled, here they come showing up and want to show out. You know, always be on the lookout for those, amen, who, amen, did not celebrate you. They're just trying to tolerate you. Number three, decide immediately to keep digging. Um, as it's stated in the word of the Lord that as they quarreled over one well, it did not stop Isaac. Why? Because he went and he began to dig another well. Sometimes we give up too easily. Sometimes we get dead in our tracks and we stop and we're just like, oh my God, you know, why didn't, you know, I, I, I don't want to do this no more. No, I'm discouraged. I'll, no, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep digging. You've got to keep and it don't let you know a mistake don't let a failure stop you from accomplishing your goal uh, develop amen develop an attitude to keep dirt off of you you know so many of us see when it says in his word and they quote over that one also so he called the name of that well sitna sitna means accusation sometimes you got to learn that you cannot make sense out of foolishness scripture says amen that um when two are quarreling one cannot discern who's the fool from who's the wise person that is important don't spend your time majoring on people who are arguing about minor things. Keep the dirt off of you. Next thing I want you to realize is depart from those who only dig people and not whales. Wow. See, a lot of us, you know, are connected with people or people are tipped to be connected with you because of your name is in the game. You know, again, they're not here to do the work. They're here for the fame. And so in times such as what we're living in right now, we need to be with people who are about the business of really digging wells. We're not here to impress people. We're here, amen, to develop our purpose and our assignment to move forward in our destiny. Remember, amen, don't dig people, amen, who are just digging people to dig people. Uh, dig people who like to dig wells. Um, we need some equity sweat equity in this. Also, from their development attitude of gratitude, do you notice that every time that old Isaac began to dig a well, um, he named that well in comparison to what he was dealing with and going through. And when God had blessed him to at Rehoboth, you know, he said that well of open spaces and places. Again, you could see it as he began to build altars, um, sharing his gratitude to God because, again, his uh, people could still be digging wells today and never hit water. But blessed be God, you know, that Isaac knew how to develop an attitude of gratitude. Don't take all the credit for yourself. Always give God the glory you know, even though you've been part of the story. Next of all, I need you to decree to others to keep digging. You know, um, that as God has blessed us, our goal is to bless and encourage other people. You know, decree and let other individuals, when you see individuals going out trying to pursue their vision, their dreams, their goals, you see people in your family trying to be the best that they can be and trying to do the best that they could do, whether they're in school, whether they're an entrepreneur, whether they are attempting a man to move or to do something that they've never done. And remember, uh, you've got to, you've been blessed to encourage them. 
And from there, dis, you know, demonstrate humility to former enemies. You hear near the end of the text that the individuals, you know, here come those haters from last week, you know, uh, those spectators coming in. And, and he reminded them, he says, y'all speaking to me, y'all at one time, you didn't even like me. Y'all threw me out. Y'all thought I was a threat. And so they said, you know, yeah, we were wrong. We realized that God was on, you know, in your life, that we realized the favor. And see, a lot of people, here's another pun, no pun intended. Some people don't miss the water till the well runs dry. And sometimes people won't appreciate you until you are no longer part of their lives. And even in the midst of how he was treated by them, the scripture says that he created and he uh, had a beautiful feast for them and he treated them uh, with humanity and kindness. Demonstrate humility to your former enemies. Depart in peace. Scripture says, strive with peace with all men and holiness without no one shall see the Lord. That as they left, they left um, in peace. And as they left in peace, they left with an oath, a covenant, you know, to treat each other's right. You know, that when you delight yourself in digging, you know, at, the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in digging. What in the well do you want? I want all that God has for you and for me. Delight yourself and keep on digging. Sheba, that's the oath. And that is the space and place that is there throughout generations to come. If you've gotten to a point of listening to these words on this Thoughtful Tuesday, and you are asking yourself, what in the well do I want? I want to be closer, I want to be stronger, I want to be restored. I need help and encouragement. Repeat these words with me. Dear Lord, I am a sinner, and I'm asking you today to become the head of my life. Please forgive me from all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me, and three days later, you were raised from the grave. And because I believe today, I am saved. Now, Lord, please fill me with the gift of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Type in, I am saved. Now, join with us as you hear the sights and sounds of St. John the Mighty Fortress. Blessings to you. Continue to send in your pics. You see the information on the screen that we can share those sights and sounds uh, during our Thoughtful Tuesday experience. Now as you share with us the 3T ministry, the time, talent, and tithe of St. John the Mighty Fortress. There are several ways to give to support the ministries of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, your time, talent, and tithe. We've made virtual giving so easy. Just text St. John SAV to 73256 and follow the prompts. That's St. John, S-A-V, 73256 and follow the prompts. Or you can call the number right on your screen to speak to someone and give your credit card information. 912-844-1872. That's 912-844-1872. 
or feel free to mail in your cash, donations, and tithes to St. John Baptist Church, The Mighty Fortress, 2415 East Duran Avenue, Savannah, Georgia, 31406. And to give your time and talent or to find out more information on everything going on at St. John, The Mighty Fortress, including our virtual worship experiences, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Periscope, or go to stjohnsavannah.org. Thank you once again. Continue to hit us up on our website, stjohnsavannah.org. Remember that we're on the radio every Tuesday night uh, prior to uh, seeing you here on iHeartRadio, WSOK Savannah, uh, the soul and voice of Savannah gospel music, every Tuesday at 7 to 7.30, and then come right here and join us for Thoughtful Tuesdays. Every morning, uh, there's a Mighty Fortress moment, as well as Morning Manor on Sundays. Uh, when you're in our region and area and vicinity, join us for drive-in worship at St. John the Mighty Fortress, 2415 East Darren Avenue in the soul of Savannah. Continuously hit us up uh, right here on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of our social platforms. And remember, Amen. And as you ask yourself, as you go through this week, what in the world do I want? Blessings. Oh, we are the grace today because you are worthy. We lift our hands to say thank you.